Apple's plan is to jumpstart iPad sales with the new iPad Pro. It's powerful, it's big, but is this really going to be a game changer? Joining us now to talk about the iPad Pro, which goes on sale online today, is Dana Woolman of Engadget. Dana, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I know you haven't gotten to actually test the iPad Pro uh, very thoroughly yet or really spend a big amount of time on it, but you did have your hands on it for a few minutes at the launch event. What was your initial reaction? Well, first of all, it's obviously a very big iPad, but um, surprisingly easy to use considering how big it is. It's on par almost with a 13-inch laptop, but it's very light for what it is. It's very well built, and the pen that goes with it in particular is wonderful to use. It's sort of a cliche to say this, but it feels almost like using a writing implement on good old paper. Um, not quite, but as close as you can get, basically. And you've said that the, it's a bold claim on Apple's part when they compare the Pro to a PC. What do you mean by that? Um, Apple has a lot of experience building laptops and computers. And it also obviously has a lot of experience building tablets. But this is the first device that really claims to be uh, two in one. And that's something that PC makers, including Microsoft, have been at for years now. And if you look at Microsoft, and if you use Microsoft Surface Tablet as an allegory, it has taken Microsoft several years to really perfect or even come close to perfecting the two-in-one form factor. Only now are we really saying that the Surface is good enough to replace your laptop. And this is really Apple's first go at it. So it's a little bit of a cocky statement to say that this first-generation product with very little experience behind it in the two-in-one space can fully replace a laptop. Yeah, and, and certainly it's not cheap in terms of tablets either. The entry-level price with a device, with the Apple Pencil and a keyboard, comes in at just under $1,100. What are your thoughts on that pricing? That definitely puts a lot of pressure on Apple to compete with laptops. If it's priced like a laptop, people are going to expect it to perform like a laptop, that is, be as fast as a laptop, have battery life that's as good or as better than a laptop, and also be as comfortable to use. I think. To go back to that Microsoft example, one of the things other companies have gotten wrong in the past is you've got these two-in-one laptop tablet hybrids, and uh, how comfortable are they to use? How are they comfortable enough to use in tablet mode? And what is it like when you dock them into their keyboard and you try and put them in your lap? Those uh, Microsoft definitely made mistakes in both those areas when it started out, and there's no clear indication yet, at least as far as I'm concerned, that Apple has learned from those mistakes. So Apple might have some growing pains too. Yeah, and certainly we'll have to see how uh, consumers react to this as it hits stores this week. Well, Dana Woolman, thanks for uh, speaking with us today. Thank you for watching. I'm Morgan Brennan. Have a great day. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Dowdy from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.